Hi, and welcome to Best My Test. In today's video, we are going to look at words that show cause. The words we are looking at today are cause, reason, factor, culprit, arise, and attribute. They are extremely important in TOEFL and IELTS exams, especially in speaking and writing sections. That's why in today's lesson, we are going to show you how to use them properly in English. In addition, we will show you useful patterns and expressions used with these words. So, let's get started. Let's first talk about the word cause itself, to make sure you understand the word and how to use it. A cause is something that leads to something else. The thing it leads to is normally called an effect. That's why you're likely to hear the phrase cause and effect when people are trying to analyze how things happen. The following patterns and expressions are commonly used with the noun cause. Note that A here is the cause and B is the result. So, one cause of B is A. A is a cause of B. And another cause of B is A. Here are some example sentences. One primary cause of overpopulation is the higher birth rate. The leading cause of overpopulation is the higher birth rate. The underlying cause of youth violence is poor social attachments from earliest childhood. Our ecological footprint is one primary cause of global warming. Our ecological footprint is one major cause of global warming. Another major cause of global warming is the increasing concentrations of ozone depleting chemicals. Another main cause of global warming is emissions of greenhouse gases. As you can see from the examples, Adjectives such as primary, main, major, leading or underlying are often used with the noun cause. The meaning of underlying here refers to something beneath something else, but the word carries a more subtle meaning. We use the word underlying to describe something which is hidden but still important, something that is the basis or root of something. Therefore, when we say A is an underlying cause of B, it means that A is the root cause of B. For example, a lack of educational opportunities is an underlying cause of poverty. The word cause can also be a verb. The word to cause means to produce an effect, like when you slice onions and it causes your eyes to water. The past tense of cause is caused, as used in this sentence here. What caused you to lose your job? In this sentence, someone wants to know the reason the other person lost their job the latter being the effect here. So, patterns which are often used with the verb cause are the following. A causes B, or A causes B to do something, and B is caused by A. Here are examples for each of the patterns. The increasing popularity of ebooks causes a decline in paper book sales. The increasing popularity of ebooks causes the sales of paper book to decline. And the decline in paper book sales is caused by the increasing popularity of ebooks. So, what are the alternatives we can use to talk about cause? The first word we are looking at is reason. The following patterns and expressions are commonly used with the noun reason. The reason why something is happening is, or one reason for something is. Let's look at the following examples. One reason why the population is growing so fast is that the death rates have fallen dramatically. One reason why the population is growing so fast is the drastic decline in the death rates. The reason for overpopulation is that resources are limited. Note that similar to cause, the adjectives primary and main are often used with the word reason. Using this, you can change the last sentence like this. The primary or main reason for overpopulation is that resources are limited. Okay, the next word is factor. A factor is a part or an element that contributes to a result. For example, there are many factors that contribute to global warming. Normally, when you're making a decision, you think about many different factors. For example, if you're making a decision on where to go to university, money, Distance and quality will all be factors in your decision. Notice the preposition in is used after the word factor. The word factor can also be used as a verb. 
To factor in means to consider something relevant when making a decision or conclusion. For example, we need to factor in the weather and traffic when figuring out how long the drive will be. Now, let's see three common patterns and expressions used with the word factor. One factor in B is A, or A is one factor in B. Another factor in B is A. Let's look at some example sentences. Note that we often use adjectives such as key, critical, contributing and crucial with the noun factor. The key factor in the current growth in population is mortality rate, or one critical factor in the current growth in population is mortality rate. Decreasing the number of cars on the road is one crucial factor in the effort to reduce air pollution, or decreasing the number of cars on the road is one contributing factor in the effort to reduce air pollution. Another factor in water pollution is the increase in fertilized use by farmers. Or another crucial factor in water pollution is the increase in fertilized use by farmers. If you don't want to use factor in in any of the above sentences, you can use factor that contributes to something instead. Take this sentence for example. One critical factor in the current growth in population is mortality rate. You can change it to one critical factor that contributes to the current growth in population is mortality rate. When you want to talk about something that causes something bad to happen, we often use the word culprit instead of cause. For example, ultraviolet A rays are often the real culprit for health problems related to too much sun exposure. A banana left on the steps can be a culprit for making you slip and fall. Another word you can use to introduce the cause of something is the verb arise, which means to get up or to come up. It is followed by the preposition from, to say that something comes up from a certain cause. Take a look at the following examples. Accidents arise from carelessness. These problems arise from the widening of the gap between the rich and the poor. Or, mental disorders arise from the complex interplay of heredity, biology and environment. Okay, let's look at our final word today, the verb attribute. So when you say A is attributed to B, it means that A is regarded as the result of B. The examples below demonstrate how to use the word. I attribute my success to hard work. This sentence would mean that I think my success is a result of hard work. And other examples would be, climate change is widely attributed to the buildup of greenhouse gases, or we can attribute this problem to the lack of attention to detail. Okay, there are actually many other ways that can show cause and result relationships in English. For instance, you can use transition words like as a consequence to show results or subordinating conjunctions like due to to show cause. I encourage you to check out our video how to express cause and effect relationship in your essay part one. It will help you a lot to familiarize with the two concepts. All right. This marks the end of the video. In the next video, we are going to look at the other part of cause and effect and talk about words that show effect, result or consequence. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to check out our website at bestmytest.com. Thank you for watching and goodbye.